Well, to talk more about that, we're joined in the studio by Jalal Nali, international affairs expert from Morocco. Good to see you, Jalal. Good to see you, Laura. So, is this deal going ahead? Um, what exactly is the Barak 8 system and why does Morocco need it? Yes, actually, um, yeah, first, first things is that uh, Morocco started this upgrade, upgrading this system. Uh, all the military, uh, different military uh, parts of, uh, uh, in 2017. Uh, there was a big change actually in the military structure, even in the leadership. Uh, they, uh, they took someone very experienced from the southern region of the Sahara called the General Warak. So he is reporting directly to the, uh, 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 to, the, to the king. So in this deal, actually, they started uh, changing the strategy from quantitative to qualitative. And part of it actually was this deal after the visit of, uh, of uh, uh, Minister Gantz to Morocco. Uh, straight after, actually, uh, we could see that uh, many officials and uh, even the director and the president of uh, uh, AIAI uh, visit to Morocco, actually, to start presenting what is this system. Uh, the system ex itself, actually, it's uh, very sophisticated, one of the best in the planet. This is why Morocco, actually, put their eyes on, on, on their system. Is it similar to the Iron Dome technology that Israel uses? Uh, yes, uh, the Iron Dome actually, if you look at it closer, actually all the components are the same, the same manufacturer, mm -hmm. but with this uh, Barak MX, uh, MX actually, uh, you have different manufacturers and uh, you have effectors, you have an, M, uh, you have an MB, uh, BMS, uh, Battle Management System, it's like, uh, <coughs> let's, say, let's say a management uh, structure, that is connecting all the uh, missiles, let's, let's say effectors, those are mi missiles platform, def uh, defensive platforms, and you have the sensors, all the types of radars. So all these uh, components actually can be even from different manufacturers and they will be managed by the central uh, hub. This is actually the new and the very important part of, this, uh, of the role that this uh, dome, let's say, this. Uh, air system will be playing in the future. So, so where is the threat? Why is Morocco upgrading its defense capabilities right now? Yes, first actually, uh, as you said, as you mentioned, Algeria, because we understand that Morocco like, uh, didn't start any escalation since the beginning of the, uh, as you mentioned as well, the, the, uh, the recognition of the US. Uh, of the Moroccan sovereignty over the Sahara. Right, we should explain that the dispute between Morocco and Algeria goes back to yeah. sovereignty over the Western Sahara exactly. region. Exactly, we're talking about my age. Uh, it started like 47 years ago. And since actually Algeria is still sticking to this uh, iron wall, they, because uh, there was back then there was the West against the, uh, the East uh, uh, with the URSS. Uh, Algeria was... Uh, part of the, the, the other side, so Morocco was always an ally of the West. So the problem started there. Even with the change, geopolitical, geopolitical change, international relations change, Algeria is still sticking to that old narrative, which is not going anywhere. Morocco actually extended the hand, the hand actually to start talking and uh, relationships uh, and dialogue over this issue to solve it in a way, a uh, smart way. <laughs> Even Hassan II, the father of the actual king, uh, started the idea and promoted the idea of the Maghreb Arab. Mm -hmm to promote peace, promote uh, exchange people and uh, uh, financial exchange, like kind of European Union. It didn't work because of Algeria. It's been a hard, blocking. Exactly. hard rejection from Algeria. Exactly. And you have as well the Algerians actually who opened the door to Russia to in the region and you have the uh, Iranian backed militias going through, going to Mali, destabilizing the region. So Morocco actually is not escalating here. It's just a strategic alliance. We can, we can see that it started as a cooperation, security cooperation between Morocco and uh, Israel. And now we are reaching the level of strategic cooperation. Well, well, quite. I mean, and, and the, the fact that Israel is willing to sell this very sensitive technology to Morocco does suggest a, a high level of trust between the two countries, um, given that officially ties have only been out in the open for, for a couple of years. Exactly. Actually, if you look closer, Morocco is, uh, is importing at, 90, at, uh, at the rate of 91% American weaponry, uh, something like... Uh, 8.2% uh, uh, from France and 0.8% uh, from, from the UK. Now uh, Israel is playing a role and I, th I guess that it will start playing uh, an increasing role now with this partnership actually to produce, uh, 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 to create a military industry in Morocco. So we are expecting actually a crescendo uh, uh, 
uh, way of doing business and not just at the military or security level. We know that uh, relationships started before. We know that uh, Morocco owned and bought three through uh, third parties, uh, three Heron. Uh, drones. Uh, he, he he bought as well some uh, uh, some uh, how we call it uh, uh, elements or equipments from this Bluebird mm -hmm. uh, in the past. So we know that Morocco used to buy this technology. Even uh, this Lockheed Martin upgrades. Actually, we know that 10 years ago Morocco used to buy through third parties all these uh, new upgrades. So it's not a new thing. It's just now we are coming to the daylight and we are. Uh, actually promoting and getting this uh, relationship to the next level. And, and, and do you see that cooperation uh, developing further and uh, deepening over the next Absolutely. year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, uh, I came here because I have this initiative. I don't know if you heard about it. Uh, Abraham Peace Gate. Uh, right, like yeah. Moroccan civil society, we're going to, to build uh, a, a gate to symbolize, symbolize actually the new era of peace between these uh, countries in the region. And I'm talking about um, uh, with the politicians here, uh, with academics and economists to start actually linking things so and civil creating society, bridges, right. bridges, not to leave it at the political level, because that, that's the start actually, that they are paving the ground for us. And now we are moving forward actually slowly but steadily and surely to uh, a better place. All right, sounds great, very positive. All right, Jalal Dalit, thank you very much thank indeed you very much, for talking to us.